In this video, I will show and explain how to apply material properties for daylight simulation. There is some stuff you need to be aware of when you do the daylight studies. There is some limitation at the moment that you should be aware of. I will look both at glazing materials and opaque materials. I can access the material library by going to manage and materials. Let's look at glass first. All materials have an identity, a description that doesn't affect anything for the simulation. That's the same with the graphics, but the appearance is the one we should look into. The physical and thermal don't have either any influence on the daylight simulation. So under appearance we have our properties for the glazing. First of all, we need to change the color to custom color so we can access the custom color because this one is the one that will affect how transparent the glaze is. The reflectance and sheets of glaze is not supported for the daylight simulation at the moment. The reflectance is set to a default reflectance of 4%. When changing the glass, properties it is a good idea to copy the materials first because many of the objects within Revit use this default glaze material so that you should be aware of. So if I duplicate or create a totally new material go to this one duplicate selected material and giving a logical name like glass double glazing 70% referring to the visible transmittance and under appearance be aware of this icon here this means there is one material that use this material so if you don't want to mess everything up you should duplicate this asset as well click on the duplicate this asset and under information you could also type in the same name as we wrote before or gave this material double glazing 74% then we know exactly what kind of percent this glazing have and then under custom color we can specify a reflectance the easiest way of changing the trans transmittance is changing the number here but what does these numbers refer to regarding visible transmittance for that I have created a spreadsheet with the numbers in this spreadsheet that is listed up different reflectance, sorry, uh, visible transmittance and types of glazing and the thickness and this one is a Google spreadsheet and there is a link just below this video that is accessible for everyone. So let's say if we have a double glazing and we have let's say 70% of visible transmittance with glass thickness of 4 millimeters, then we should set the RGB color to 76 and it means red, green and blue color so if I go back to Revit and type 76 in here then you get a grayscale when it's the same number I could also use another color mix of different red, green and blue but then it's a little bit more difficult to calculate the visible transmittance. So to keep it simple we just use grayscale colors like this and press enter and when we have specified these things we can use this material in our Revit model but one thing we should be aware of that is how this glazing object is modeled. In some window families some of the manufacturers have model each, uh, each pane as a single object and that is not the, the best way of doing it so if that is the case you should either use other values where this is taken into account or go in and remodel this object but typically these default template windows is not modeled in that way they are typically just modeled with one object or geometry that represent the glazing both if it's just a single 
double or triple or whatever glazing then it's only one geometry and that is the way it should be modeled to finish I can press OK and let's say I want to use this glazing material for this curtain wall I can select the panel here go to properties and edit type and under materials and finishes I can select this new glaze material that we just created this is maybe not the correct one in this case but for the example and then press OK and OK and then let's change to this material